Greetings, I'm Ben and this is another R video and in this one I just want to show you some tips for getting a data set that you've downloaded from the popular Qualtrics survey software into R so that it's um, easy, it's easy to use and uh, th there uh, can be some frustrating things with getting your data set up and a lot of my videos assume that your data is already set up and ready to use. So this is kind of a, I just downloaded my data set from Qualtrics and uh, I need to get it in R. So um, to start out, um, I recommend that we load the tidyverse package. So I guess if you have never installed, well, the Tidyverse family of packages, I guess. And so if you've never installed it, you'll want to use your install.packages, uh, quotate it left parentheses in quote marks Tidyverse, close quote, close parentheses. But if you've already installed it, then just make sure you load it with library, left parentheses, Tidyverse, right parentheses. Um, and that should load up. Primarily, I think dplyr is the tidyverse package that we're using here. Um, the other thing that you want to do is um, make sure that your data file is in the working directory that you're using. And so if you say get wd and then left paren, right paren, it'll show you the folder that's currently your working directory. Um, and my working directory by default is backslash users, backslash Warner BE, backslash capital R E X. Now, the, or I'm sorry, my default is users Warner B. Um, I changed my working directory so that it went to a subfolder in the Warner B folder that's called Rex or R E X for our examples. Um, and I changed that working directory by using set wd and then left parentheses, left quote mark, backslash users, capital U in my case, backslash Warner BE. So that's my default working directory. You would be typing whatever your path is. And then backslash rex. So you just type the path of the folder that you want to be your working directory. Um, you can also, in R Studio click on the Session button, set a working directory, and then choose a directory, and that drop-down menu will allow you to set a working directory if you don't want to type the name of it. The important thing is that the data file needs to be in your working directory folder um, so that you can read it in directly without having to type out the full path every time. So. Um, before you do what we're about to do, make sure that you have a folder set as your working directory and that inside of that folder is a CSV file that you downloaded from Qualtrics. Now the other thing is that the CSV file that you download from Qualtrics is going to have a big nasty name. It's going to have um, all sorts of characters in it and it's not a name that you're going to be able to commit to memory or easily type in. And so I also recommend that you rename that CSV file when you put it in your working directory. You'll see that I renamed um, my CSV file um, something a lot easier to type than whatever it downloaded by default. Okay, now, one of the problems with a CSV file downloaded from Qualtrics is that a typical CSV file has the top row that has the names of your variables, and the next two rows are um, extra information about your variables that Qualtrics puts there. Um, and the packages or, or functions in R that read those in are going to get frustrated at the existence of this extra information. So you can use read.csv or you can use the reader function to use a fun to uh, the reader package, I'm sorry, to use a function that's read underscore csv. Um, if you use the reader function then you can also skip the first three lines but then you lose your variable names. Um, and if you use read.csv, then it'll bring all of your variable names in. You can just easily delete out the rows. So for example, if we did um, the data frame, we're going to call it 
GAPEX equals, then we'll do read.csv um, and it's called GAP dot, GAPN dot CSV. Um, Oops, forgot to put it in quote marks. So you need to have your data file in quote marks. So then if we look at the, so if we use glimpse, which is one of the functions, I think it's in dplyr, it's one of the tidyverse functions. So if we use uh, glimpse to look at gap ex, you'll see that um, it'll show us kind of the first couple of rows, and you'll see that the first is called start date, it's labeled character, then we have start date, import ID, start date. Uh, so this isn't ideal. Um, it keeps our variable names, but it has everything imported as a character or a series of strings. And then the first two rows are the extra information that Qualtrics gives us. Um, and it's simple enough to delete out those rows, or we could use um, the reader function um, read underscore CSV. So we could go gap ex2 equals read underscore CSV um, in quote marks um, gap n dot CSV. Then we could say skip equals three and it'll skip the first three lines. It's running for a second. Is it going to work? Okay, so it did work eventually, um, and it, mm, it skipped three lines, but, oh, I see. It skipped three lines, but then the first row it gave the uh, data names, so that didn't work. I think you need to do, like, call names equals one. Okay, and so then if we do that, and then look, it just gives us, it gets rid of all of our existing variable names and just replaces them with x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. So that's not ideal either. So um, there is a package that was built, that was developed to address this frustrating limitation. And the package is called Qualtrics. So if you go install.packages, left parentheses, left quote mark, Q U A L T capital R I C S close quote close paren and then library library and load that package so library left paren left quote Qualtrics with the R capitalized right quote right paren load that package then you can use the read underscore survey function of this package. Now I will say, let's give credit to the person who wrote Qualtrics. So I hope you're using the citation function of R so that you can cite the people whose packages you use because that's how they get credit for this. So you should be doing that for R, you should be doing that for tidyverse, and here we'll do it for Qualtrics. So citation, left paren, left quote, Qualtrics, right quote, right paren, and then it gives us the uh, people who wrote the Qualtrics package as the output. So uh, Jin J, O'Brien J, Seal J, and then it gives us the citation for that. So thank you people for writing this package. Then we can create, so we'll go gap, which will be the name of our data set. I'm naming my data set gap because this is good argument podcasts. So that's what GAP stands for. You'll obviously name your data set something that makes sense to you. So I'm naming this data set GAP equals, um, and then we're going to use read underscore survey, which is the function that we just gave ourselves access to through the Qualtrics package. And we want GAP n.csv which is the name of the file that's in my working directory. So the file in your working directory will have the name whatever you renamed it, and that's what you put in the quote marks. So it's read underscore survey, left parentheses, left quote mark, the name of the file in your working directory, mine is gapn.csv, 
write quote mark write paren. And that will import the CSV file that Qualtrics gives you in a way that makes sense for R. So if we use the glimpse uh, gap, it will give us an output of the data that um, has all of the variable names from Qualtrics. It doesn't have the extra rows as fields. Um, and it gives us the, um, it gives us, you know, some examples of the, um, the rows. Now let's see. One thing that I, one thing that's worth noting about Qualtrics is that it has this, status um, variable. And the status variable tells you whether it's a normal record or a preview. And so this is another frustrating thing about Qualtrics. When I design a survey in Qualtrics, uh, me and my research collaborators do a lot of previews to make sure that everything's working just fine. And then when we export the data, those previews are included. So our just kind of clicking through responses are included. And we want to get rid of all of those previews. So um, there's another package that I really like um, called Janitor that just gives you tables that I like better. So I'm going to install dot packages janitor and then library janitor. So I like the janitor package quite a bit. Citation janitor. Oops. Uh, so whoever S. Firki or Firk is, that person developed the janitor package, and I quite like it. Um, thank you to them. And what we're using this package for is to just get frequency tables, but which you can just use the base R T A B L E table function to get a frequency table. But I like the janitor tables T A B Y L table. I like those better, so that's what we'll be using. So if we use gap. And then we need a pipe, which is a percent sign, a greater than sign, and a percent sign. And that just says, I'm about to ask for something in the gap data set that I just imported. So that's what we're doing with the pipe. So gap, pipe, T-A-B-Y-L, and the variable is status. Um, and it shows that Z, the zero response to status, there are 1,348 people, which is 99% of the respondents, and the one value on status, nine people have that. So those nine people are actually just me testing my survey to make sure it works, and I obviously want to get rid of those from the data set. So now I'm going to get rid of everybody that has a value of one in status, which are the survey previews. So to do that, I'm going to say gap equals gap. What this will do is create a new data frame called gap using my old data frame called gap. And then I want a pipe again that's just connecting the following command to the gap data set. And I'm going to use filter, which is a function in dplyr. And so I'm going to filter based on the status variable. And if you're downloading a um, Qualtrics data file, it should always include the status variable and every value other than zero means it's not a typical response. So in my case they're all either zeros which is the typical response and ones which is the preview. So status, and I'm going to use the exclamation point which means not, and then the equal sign, so now I'm saying status doesn't equal one. And so this will filter all of the responses and get rid of everybody who has a value of one for status. So having run that, if I rerun the table command, you'll see that the only values for status that exist are zero, and it's only the 1,348 people in there. So I've just effectively filtered out everybody who hasn't, um, who, who is a real, or I filtered out all of the preview responses. I filtered out all of me going through making sure the survey worked okay. Okay, um, is there anything else irritating or upsetting about this that is 
that I should bring to your attention right now? I don't think so. There are a couple of other, I mean, we could, um, I'll do another video on creating some data cleaning and some data renaming and that sort of stuff. But I think for now, this is a good place to end it. Just, you got your data imported, you got rid of all the previews that Qualtrics keeps, um, you got rid of the extra rows that Qualtrics brings in. So hopefully that is uh, helpful and now you can get your data set in your working directory, rename it into R in a format that you can manipulate for uh, you know, using the rest of the videos as tutorials. Thanks for watching.